on today's show things can indeed no matter what's going on in life no matter how down you are it can still get even more bottom than rock bottom. Max Scherzer gets hit up by the Padres, but it doesn't matter. Emilia Pagan is a fraud, apparently, in every sense of the word. And the disaster clown trade train continues. All that and a whole lot more of sadness and hopefully therapy talk here on Locked on Padres. Guys, you know what it is. Here we go. <laughs> You are Locked On Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for... Thursday, September 30th, dear Lord, thank the Lord. We are almost done with this horrid month known as September. Uh, if you guys are familiar or not, whatever, as always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my baseball related work at places like Baseball FYI, Friars on Base, Off the Bench Baseball, or Just Baseball, to which I am a staff writer for. Or if you're like me and this Padre season has you depressed, maybe you're putting out a bunch of movies and stuff. I've also written about pop culture at places like Film Cred, Inverse, Bloody Disgusting, uh, Nerdist, and Mental Floss, and many more, and hopefully many more to come. I reverse the order of my publications yet again. Uh, but most importantly, of this year, Lockdown Padres podcast, you can check out and follow Twitter page for the show, which is at LO underscore Padres, or my personal account, which is at Javapeno, J A V I I P E N O. And if you saw me, I was pointing. If you see me on the YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, uh, Locked On Padres on YouTube. For all my audio listeners, the uh, description of the podcast has a link to it. Go subscribe. Go leave comments. Roast me. I don't care. Do all that stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun on there, and I'm really enjoying it. It's reinvigorated me over this disastrous Padres season, and that's what we have to continue talking about. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just hoping that at this point, all my listeners, all my viewers on the YouTube and all that, uh, granted, it's a little bit more uh, nascent of a beginning uh, when it comes to the YouTube development of things. But you know what? I hope you guys are just enjoying having someone who is able to, I guess, be a little bit of a catharsis uh, when it comes to expressing their frustration about this team. The Padres lose yet again. But unlike unlike Wednesday's game, right? Unlike Wednesday's game. Or I'm sorry, unlike Tuesday's game. Unlike Tuesday's game, that one was a little bit more like, okay, Walker Bueller pitched well. You know what I mean? Like, Walker Bueller pitched well. They lose 2 1. They don't hit any offense till, until the top of the ninth inning with a Jake Cronenworth home run, Ray Cronenworth, Jake from Ray Farm, whatever you want to call him. Uh, this was more of a disaster. At one point, ladies and gentlemen, the Padres are just absolutely beating the brakes off of the Dodgers. Uh, nine to five at the top of the seventh inning. So, you know that graphic that's been going around a lot, which is the Padres playoff chances? graphic that looks like i i mean it just goes dead you know when they show the heartbeat monitor thing in the movies and like that's basically what happens to the pirates it's up here at the beginning up here at the beginning and then it becomes like you know 75 percent after stuff that happens at the deadline when they're like 42 you know they're 15 games above 500 or whatever it's still a pretty good team uh and then it's just like an absolute just a disaster where's the helicopter there's the rally copter. You see it? It's spinning. It's spinning. It's spinning. It's no more. No more spin. And then it just, it just absolutely crashes. That's the Padres second half, as we've talked about a lot. And this game, kind of a little bit of a decent microcosm for the Padres collapse. In this game, let's talk about it, all right? The big thing is starting pitching. Let's start with that, okay? Because there's a lot that we're going to be talking about from this game today, guys. Uh, starting for the Padres today is Mr. Ryan Weathers, who, as usual, is not very good. Uh, goes three innings, giving up five earned runs on five hits, three walks, two strikeouts. A lot of damage comes early on. And, and also, this isn't one of those starts where I thought that those under those numbers didn't tell the whole story. No, he wasn't make, missing any bats. And as usual, people are just teeing off on him. One of the artists, like, hit rates off of his fastballs and stuff like that in the entire league. Uh, in the top of sorry bottom of the first inning Trey Turner getting an RBI Max Muncy getting an RBI and AJ Pollock getting a two-run home run that's four nothing and what stinks is after that beginning it's like okay usual Padres you know what I mean but like the movie Buried if you guys have seen that movie with Ryan Reynolds or I'm gonna be making a lot of movie references on today's podcast uh that movie it tricks you you think it's despair which is like oh, okay this is sad and then it gives you that glimmer of hope 
All right. In this case, it was a little bit more of a glimmer, actually, with Victor Caratini hitting a home run in this game. Then we get a two run home run from Manny Machado in the top of the third. And then the top of the fourth happens, which was absolutely lovely. A ground rule double from Adam Frazier, who all of a sudden decided after things were all said and done, Adam Frazier decided to be at least a competent batter. It's too late now, but he hits a ground rule double that allows um, Victor Caratini to score. And then Jake Cronworth reaches on a Corey Seager error. So Corey Seager. Shortstop for the Dodgers. Um, I wish it was Trey Turner just because it's more fun to, I guess, not more fun, but it's a little bit more of a release when Trey Turner doesn't do well, considering that Mike Rizzo of the Nationals is a narc for having given him up as well uh, in those trades with the Max Scherzer trade at the deadline. I was I was so livid when I had heard that, guys. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Are they like just trying to help the Dodgers? Like, I just could not believe that, right? Of course, we'll see how those prospects turn out, whatever. Um, but uh, those runs do end up scoring. It's 5-5 then. Then you get a Will Myers triple, allowing Victor Caratini to score. Then you get a Tommy Pham double, a Trent Grisham single, all that combining to be 9-5. But then the disaster strikes. Mr. Emilio Pagan, we are going to talk about a little bit more in the next segment. Emilio Pagan ends up giving up, let's see here, ah, yes, three home runs to the Dodgers. It's 9-5, and all of a sudden, by the end of the eighth inning, it is 11-9. His final stat line for the night, 0.1 innings pitched, four earned runs on four hits. He got one out. One out. You know? And I don't know about you guys, but like I said, like the movie Buried, it gives you, you, you uh-oh, the, the Padres, you think they're dead, then they come back to life, and you have a little bit of hope, oh, and then boom! They just come crashing down with the force of a million suns, the force of 10 tons of bricks, the force of a Mario ground pound onto a thwomp in the Super Mario 64 games, whatever analogy you guys are most comfortable with. That's what basically happens here. Um, Emilio Pagan, just a total disaster, right? And this is what happens here. And then Nabil Krismak comes in after Emilio Pagan also gave up, by the way, a double to Justin Turner, which I called, by the way. Could ask my mom. She's upstairs right now. She's not here. I can't bring her on the podcast. But she literally heard me say, no, Justin Turner is hitting one. He's hitting at least a double. He's hitting. A, he's smashing one to left field. And then, boom, he smashes one to left field. That's exactly what happens. Um, and then Corey Seager comes up with Nabil Krismak, who, in fairness, has been one of the few, like, you know, role players for lack of a better term that the Padres have actually had a decent amount of success with but of course wrong place wrong time for him he gives up the home run to Corey Seager and then the Padres naturally go down without any fight in the top of the ninth inning with strikeouts from Fernando Tatis on three pitches a strikeout from Trent Grisham two pitches on the inside corner of the plate which Trent Grisham by the way you guys want to know how to hit a pitch to him throw any fastball inside maybe not like no, no, no. Yeah. Low and inside works medium inside. No, everything inside, especially up to like the, you know, up to it. Like, you know, like what's that called? Like uh batter. What's that called? Like the top of the zone, that area, basically all the inside pitches he cannot hit. So do that. Trent Grisham strikes out. And then that, you know, it, it, that, that's basically the end of the game. It's just a total malpractice. That's what the Padres are the second half. Right. And it's just, I don't know, man. I guess the only positive that you could take away from this game that was at least fun for a little bit is that if you if you just want to be a real piece of crap, you know, and you really just want to root for all sadness for the Dodgers. And I understand. Believe me, uh, Jeff Snyder is waiting for me to finish my podcast recording as we speak so he can get on there and be happy. Does that make me happy? No, it makes me miserable knowing that I'm going to have to hear Jeff Snyder be happy tomorrow. You know how awful that is? Jeff Snyder is a supervillain. A, a genuine supervillain. I'm talking Dr. Robotnik. I'm talking the 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 bad guys from Minority Report. I'm talking uh the the, the um, what's his name? Scooter McGavin. What's the guy from Happy Gilmore? That shooter McGavin. That's how evil this man Jeff Snyder is. And he's gonna be thrilled. And he should be, to be honest with you, because tonight the Padres are able to rough up Max Scherzer. He only goes five and a third innings, giving up five earned runs, only six runs technically, but only five earned on eleven hits. 11 hits and Max Scherzer up until this point, might I add, had a, I believe it is a 1.43 ERA. It was below one before then, actually before his last couple uh, appearances and pitches. Uh, and then 1.43 with the Dodgers this year, just absolutely incredible. And he was almost making a case actually for the Cy Young, which is kind of a little slow thing that was building up. And of course they kind of nuked that out of existence, which was awesome, especially considering we thought we were once going to get him. It was so satisfying. The main Machado home run was awesome, but of course the Padres can't hang on to the lead. And as you disappointment and you have the rights and you have the prerogative. And honestly, you should be absolutely mad 
I encourage you to be mad at this team because this is a like this isn't just a regular collapse, guys. This is a guy that Tom. This is a team that Tom Verducci is writing about in Sports Illustrated, talking about how the Dodgers and Padres could be one of the big next rivalries in the sport and carry its ratings and you know like Yankees Red Sox and all that. And instead, instead they are a joke in every sense of the word. And we're going to continue covering exactly why they're a joke, guys. But before we get into that, before we get into that, we have to talk about something else, guys. Look, look, the Padres, all you Padres fans, you know, there's an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about. It's called Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Uh, and all you have to do is just download it. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code BASEBALL and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore get patch get cash back using get upside just download the app again for free on the app store and use promo code baseball i know very creative passcode uh, uh promo code i must say guys but uh, seriously you can cash in all your stuff it's really great you want to get everyone needs gas man so go check out get upside it's really 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 good and that's it for now guys let's get back into the game all right let's get back into it let's talk about emilio pagan for a second so Emilia Pagan, the only positive thing I will say about Emilia Pagan is this. In fairness, the Padres did not at least give up seemingly too much. They gave up Manny Margo, right? And Manny Margo was a top-level prospect at one point. He was very exciting, and he was kind of a fun, entertaining player. But at least, at least the one thing that you can't say, oh, and by the way, the, the Padres are officially below 500. If people were wondering, I forgot to mention that in the beginning part. Don't worry. They're below 500. If, if, just in case you were wondering, uh, they're terrible. Um, Emil, uh, Amelia Pagan, that's what they traded um, Manny Margo for, right? You get him on the team, and this is into 2020 when the Padres were boosting their bullpen. You get Drew Pomeranz in there. You sign him to a pretty chunky contract for a reliever, right? Um, and he's he relishes, obviously. He excels in his role last year. He was great. That was a good signing. They have all these guys coming in. Craig Stammen, before he became a little bit of a disaster, he was solid. You have Pierce Johnson. You have Matt Strom, who's not too bad. And then you had some guys emerge, right? Uh, even Tim Hill was uh, okay for parts of this year. But now the Padres bullpen has also fallen off. They were one of the five best in baseball. And actually, uh, for the first half of baseball, they had the first ranked ERA among bullpen ERAs in the league. Now they're sitting around like 18, 19. It fluctuates a little bit every now and then, especially because they had a couple decent series against the Astros and what have you. But for the most part, they're in the bottom third of the league, right? But in fairness, Manny Margot, I will say, it's not like he has completely excelled with the Rays. Right. This is a guy that I was just checking a minus defensive war this year, which was supposed to be his calling card. Right. His calling card was supposed to be. Yeah, he can't hit. He's got a tint of speed on the base paths, maybe sometimes. But for the most part, he's just here to make big plays. And I was just checking like fan graphs, like a minus three point five defensive war, which was, you know, by fan graph standards, of course, but just not as big of a plus defender as we're used to. So in fairness, it's not like this guy has figured it out. There are guys that have figured it out elsewhere. Um, for trades that the Padres have made. I recently talked about the Trent Grisham trade and how Eric Lauer and Luis Arias are solid. Luis Arias, I'm not saying I'd want him over Trent Grisham. In fact, because totally different positions, he's an infielder, Grisham's an outfielder, but he's pretty solid. 21 home runs. Uh, that's just it's not too bad, man. Like he's at least he's coming up big too for that Brewers team. And the Brewers team needed offense. They needed guys who are at least going to be okay, especially with the decline of Christian Yelich and, you know, Lorenzo Cain not being all that there for them. But they get Willie Adamas, they get Eduardo Escobar, they get Abisayo Garcia, one of the other underrated players in baseball. And then Trent Grisham, he's just sitting here. I mean, I was expecting so much, man. 15 home runs from him on the year, 12 steals, which is kind of cool, but. Uh, 239, 325, 410 slash line just isn't really cutting it. I have faith in the guy, but dear Lord, has he been a disappointment this year? I mean, he's regressed incredibly too, and that doesn't get talked about a lot. So in terms of Emilio Pagan, in terms of Trent Grisham, what I really want to bring home is this. It's, it's, I, I wonder like where we view AJ Prowler, if not for Tatis, because without Tatis, highway robbery, Obviously, one of the, the worst trades viewed back. Literally, if you just Google Fernando Tatis Jr., if you're on his baseball reference page, similar pages as James Shields. Like, that's how infamous it's become as a trade. Um, like, without that, you look at all the trades. If you just do, like, a, you know how you do a pros and cons list? It's 
kind of what you do sometimes when you're figuring things out. You're trying to figure, oh, should I go to this college? Should I go to that college? Whatever. Um, you look at just the pro trades and the negative trades, right? You have Tatis in terms of all the moves that Preller's made, right? You have Tatis. You have Musgrove. You have Machado. You have, I'd say, Jay Cronenworth for sure. Um, I know that they, you know, Hunter Renfro was a decent player. But in fairness, he got better when he joined Boston. Not as much for Tampa Bay. We'll have to see what happens with um. Uh, Xavier Edwards, the, you know, 80 ish or so on the prospect rankings, top 100, most places that I've read. We'll see what happens with him. But for the most part, you know, Cronenworth by default, it just makes everything much more worth it. Um, So you have that as a win, right? Then let's look at the losses. And then, and then I'd say, I'd say Pomeranz is a win. And I'd say Melanson is a win, right? I'd say those guys, those two guys, especially with some of the few wins, but then you look at the L's, you got Myers, you got Hosmer, you got Grisham's in somewhere in the middle right now, I'd say, honestly, somewhere in the middle because Eric Lauer, I forgot to mention, also has been very solid an ERA under three for the Brewers. So uh, and Lord knows the Padres could need some some uh, starting pitching depth considering they had to bring in Vincent Velasquez and Jake Arrieta for this team. That's really bad. So then you look at the losses, Myers, Hosmer, um, Tommy Pham. That's a loss. Granted, Tommy Pham, he did get some hits in this game. I will say Tommy Pham, it looks like, is a little bit of bad injury luck. He gets hurt last year very early on. He has a couple of surgeries and what have you. He has to get that attended to. And then he had the stabbing incident. So it's like maybe part of his decline was that. It's still frustrating, but he's a little bit up there in the age. You know, he's not a spring chicken or anything like that. And combined with all those injuries he suffered. So that's like a disappointment. But I wouldn't call it a total L because it's not all Preller's fault necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Then you look at Adam Frazier. That's an L. Then you look at Emilio Pagan. That's an L. Then you look at, who else am I forgetting? You Darvish and Blake Snell. For the most part, those are L's. I have confidence that Blake Snell can turn it around next year. I don't think that August was a fluke. I think that the change in his uh, pitch percentage, throwing more fastballs, throwing more of his slider, forgetting the curveball and changeup, I think that that actually does mean something. But for the most part, those are all the L's. Getting rid of Framiel Reyes. Framiel Reyes, who some people have brought up because he's a great personality, go look up his... Uh, the, the thing he did for the the cancer patients and whatnot. I think that that was great. It was a really nice and sweet moment when he hit home run. And so we're all rooting for you and give them, gave him a little suit. I love Framiel Reyes for obvious reasons. I have to love Framiel Reyes too, by the way. But in fairness, they did give him up because no DH in the National League because the National League is stupid. Um, and he's a really bad defender. So at least that had some like sense to it and whatnot and it did end up getting us Taylor Trammell in the three-way trade with the Reds and Taylor Trammell becomes an asset that they end up using to acquire some other guys so that's at least something but nevertheless um not overall all that good and I'm probably forgetting a couple moves uh moves right now I'm trying to think the handling of Danelle Slamet he makes an appearance by the way I forgot to mention in this game guys uh uh, and, and this game last night, he does manage to at least, you know, not look terrible uh, for the most part. Uh, 2.1 innings pitched, only one hit allowed, two strikeouts. So that's kind of cool. But for the most part, it still doesn't even really matter as far as I'm concerned because he is supposed to be a starting pitcher. Then you look at Mike Clevenger. That's not necessarily a strict L, but that's somewhere in the middle because Mike Clevenger isn't pitching right now. And if he was pitching, you know, it would be good. Um or at least it would, you, we would view the trade a lot differently. I know I'm mumbling a little bit, but basically the bottom line is that the Padres are such a mess. And if not for that Tatis trade, not to sound all first takey, not to sound all, you know, here's the take. I'm going to, you know, jump out of the restaurant and just do, lay my pizza review on you. I don't know why I'm referencing the 30 second reviews from Barstool, but uh, I really do think that there's, that there's there's a greater than zero percent chance that they would move on from AJ Preller, uh, especially if not for the Tatis move. Because you look at all the moves this team made, and you look at how much better players are doing uh, elsewhere. You look at how much better guys like Cal Quantrill are doing. You know that guy looks like a great player. Eric Lauer, everyone was memeing to death not too long ago. Honestly, the first half of the season, people were just memeing. Uh, Eric Lauer for a while. He's become a contributing piece. The Padres need contributing pieces and they just don't have them right now. Um, it's just, I don't know, man. What are, what other ways are there to be sad? I'm trying to think. You know what I mean? Because one thing that has helped me is I at least play a game on my Switch for like the first five innings usually. You know, first five, six innings, maybe seventh inning stretch. And then I start getting a couple notes down for the podcast and then we and then we rock and roll. But uh, I, that's the only thing keeping me going. You know what I mean? This off season is going to be nuts. Like I actually genuinely don't know what the Padres are going to do. 
because they might just go scorched earth and just trade everybody away. And they're probably going to fire a bunch of people. And before we talk about firings and stuff, let's take a quick break, guys. Let's take a great break and talk about something that's actually positive, at least for me lately. And guys, and that's the gridiron. That's football season, ladies and gentlemen. And we're back. Obviously, if you're doing well in fantasy, congratulations to you. If you drafted Cooper Cup this year, like myself and all three of my leagues, uh, you're doing pretty good right now. But in terms of the whole betting stuff, when it comes to football, guys, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. They've got newly updated, you know, site interfaces and all that stuff, props and contests. If you head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today, um, you can receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100, guys, from football to not just football, uh, to baseball, basketball, UFC, MMA, hockey, whatever. They've got you covered uh, over at Bet Online. Also, be sure to use their promo code Locked On uh, when doing all your other non-football-related bets on there. Bet Online, guys, your online sportsbook experts. And now, just shifting gears for just a second, let's talk about Rock Auto, guys. And here's the thing. Sometimes you get those intimidating questions over at the dealership is your Odyssey and LX or an EX. I, I, I don't even know what LX or EX stands for as far as I'm concerned. The only EX I know is like versions of Pokemon evolutions or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but don't worry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto, guys. Why choose to spend up to 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership and they're also serving auto parts customers online for 20 years over 20 years in fact rock auto prices are also just really reliably low uh which is great as i mentioned why would you spend up to that much more and they have everything you can need from brake parts tail lamps motor and even new carpet so what are you waiting for go to rockauto.com and you see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliable low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com Woo! all right guys last old segment the last segment ladies and gentlemen last second oh let's do it let's rock and roll let's talk about about really quickly guys i want to just rush and just kind of talk very almost esoterically um not to use a fancy word about the padres downfall right and i'm just kind of like you know i watched this movie last night um be, be a little bit before the game started it was when, when the yankee game started for the most part uh which by the way that game was was nuts too i'm enjoying baseball right now i will say like just in terms of like as a dare I say journalists or like analysts, I am enjoying watching, just seeing all these storylines kind of trickle out, like who's going to the MVPs, who's going to win the Cy Young, especially in the NL, you know, what's going on with the AL wildcard and stuff. Seeing the Mariners win yet again is pretty wild. They might break their losing streak for the longest playoff drought. You know what I mean? The Padres broke their like 15 year drought, but guess what? Uh, the Mariners are this team, this year's uh, version of them, right? Not unfortunately the Padres are, are going to be outside looking in. I don't know what the heck's going on with them. Um, and, and that's really fun. I've enjoyed that. And the thing with the movie is that it's called Less Than Zero. It is a younger Robert Downey Jr. movie. Um, and it also features Mr. Uh, Voice of Ultron in the Marvel movies or Star of the Blacklist. You might be familiar with him. James Spader, who's awesome in it. And it's basically about this like L.A. scene when it's basically to to summarize it very quickly. I didn't think the movie was particularly good. I thought Downey was tremendous, which shouldn't surprise everybody. James Spader was very good. But the two leads are tremendously miscast, in my opinion. But basically, it's about this guy's downfall. Um, after drugs and all these sorts of things. And it gets really dark things that I can't really mention on this, you know, kind of PG to PG 13 podcast. Got to keep it, you know, PG um, on this year podcast, all these things that transpire. He just falls completely apart off a cliff. I'm talking Scarface almost like that. You know what I mean? Rise and fall type story. That's it's so timely that I happened to have chosen that movie last night. I don't know what it was. I thought that the poster looked kind of cool. Uh, just seeing Downey like all like, you know, buzzed out and whatnot. I just thought it looked kind of cool. So that's why I watched it. And maybe I shouldn't have, maybe this is my fault that I watched a rise and fall story. Uh, the night that the Padres end up blowing this game. And it's funny because looking back on, you know, just the preseason looking back on, let's forget, like, just for a second, let's just talk about how, like, I genuinely think it's sad what has happened to the Padres for baseball. And I know that that sounds like the ultimate Homer thing to say, right? 
but I think it's true. I remember how many people were talking about the Padres. I remember Jeff Passon tweeting, you know, the first Dodgers Padres series of the year when it went to like 14 innings. Remember when Jerks and Profar got Clayton Kershaw annoyed? For the record, Kershaw was right, by the way. Really whack move that Profar pulled, pretending to be hit by a pitch and all that. But or leaning into a pitch. I forgot exactly what happened. But everyone's talking about those games. You have the home runs off of Trevor Bauer that Tatis, you know, puts his hand over his eye and all that. You have the the in fairness to the Dodgers credit. You have the catch by Mookie Betts and him getting up and pounding his chest like there was clearly fire. There was an emphasis on it. The ratings were good and everyone was talking about it. Right. You know, I remember Tom Verducci wrote like a quick kind of piece with a really great graphic that you guys should look up um, at, at Sports Illustrated. Like the it's it's a graphic of like Tatis and Snell I, I, or and Darvish and Machado like throwing balls like across like it's the two stadiums it's like this cartoon almost video game 8-bit style maybe not 8-bit like 64-bit 32-bit I, I don't really know but like it felt it just looked really really cool and it was saying like look the last time we had the potential for a rivalry like this was the Yankees and Red Sox and that led for a lot of the mid-2000s and then you look at Dodgers Padres part of it was not just because the two teams were really good and really exciting in a lot of ways but it was also because the rosters were set for a few years in the future. This wasn't an, a necessary, it was a, a team that was going for it now in the Padres, but not a team that was like all in, you know, all the chips on the table, like it's rounders and it's, you know, going against the KGB, Mikey or whatever the heck his name is in that movie, uh, John Malkovich's character, I forgot his name. Um, You know, going all in and this is it. If you lose, you're done. It's like, well, they, they went in to an extent, but we're like, all right, it's going to be Snell for years to come. All the roster spots are set. And now you look at them and it's like, Oh my God, the swag chain like is a meme now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to link in the description, by the way, guys, uh, my latest article for just baseball that I wrote talking about my favorite celebration gimmicks of this year, eight in total that I ranked, including the Padres swag chain. Where did I rank it? You'll check it out. Um, you know, Toronto Blue Jays home run jacket, the Red Sox laundry car. There was sword. There's a guy with swords involved. There is all sorts of fun stuff. I made a couple jokes in there. It's a fun little article. Maybe you'll enjoy it for this Thursday um, when you guys are while you guys are watching this. If you want some accompanying reading on your train ride, maybe you, maybe you know it's late at night. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're waiting on that train ride. Maybe you're you know you're not feeling all that good. You're depressed thinking about the Padres. You just need some alone time. Maybe you need some good reads. We'll check that article out. I'm going to leave that in the description. I'm not just the 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 podcast. <laughs> it was the worst thing. What am I, the Wolfman? What, what is this American graffiti? <laughs> so dumb but anyway um going to be doing that uh for sure leaving in the description of not just the uh podcast whatever app you're listening to but also on the youtube page i'll leave a link um look it's bad it's bad and it stinks that i'm writing about the pottery swag chain and being like look this thing is also kind of a meme at this point because people are going to look back at when tatis is getting enshrined and that machado dropped the bag on this thing you know all the silver and the nine thousand stones that are involved in it the fact that the the in, the 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 what's it called the attached san diego logo you, that you can spin it and all that like i think it was at once upon a time it was so so cool was it ridiculous of course but now like that picture around the trade deadline time when they have all the executives in the room my aj power's in the room but he's not wearing it they're all wearing the swag chain i thought it was adorable i thought it was silly and i think baseball needs silly things even if they can think they're like kind of stupid you need it and it was great and now that picture i'm waiting for that to get brought up as a meme i really am i'm waiting for that um because it's it's a mess right now um i i keep seeing every time i log onto the, the the timeline people talking about like hey look at this article that was blaming the rays for what they did the rays by the way i predicted to fall off but by fall off i was like they'll finish second like they'll be fine and if at worst i remember bringing up on a podcast where i was like look man they have a lot of assets the tampa bay rays if they needed to make a trade they could i doubt that they necessarily would because of money and stuff they wouldn't go for a superstar player if they were struggling at the deadline but my thing was like ah screw it I i'm done trying to predict this i still predicted the yankees finish first in that division but you know it's the race they find a way more often than not so that's what kind of happens there but yeah, I'm just like, I really do think it's kind of sad for baseball. I think that the Giants are an incredible story. Um, we'll see. We'll see if they start having the same level of fireworks. Maybe they meet each other in the NLCS or what have you. <laughs> but the Padres was different, man. And I'm telling you, I watched the games. I watched San Francisco and LA as well. It's different, man. 
it's different. There was a ferocity to those games, especially early on. Not as much later on. They because the Padres were fall, completely collapsing and they don't know how to win a baseball game anymore. But now, uh, at the beginning, looking back, it's like, man, those really were the good old days. I don't mean to do the the Michael Scott quote and say, you know, I wish we were living, we knew when we were living the good old days. But like, man. I miss those times so much. They brought me so much joy, even when the Padres lost because they were great games. And I genuinely think this is bad for the sport. I think this is an unfortunate occurrence. We all thought we were getting Yankees, Red Sox. Instead, we're getting just two powerhouse teams. Again, maybe the Giants, you start seeing that ferocity in the playoffs. Maybe something happens. Someone gets hit by a pitch. I don't know. But like clearly the teams were at odds. They were at each other's necks, drawing ire. It was great from both fan bases are fighting in the stadium. Now, that part I don't approve. But like, for the most part, I thought it was just just tremendous. And nowadays, this is easily the worst collapse I've seen. I mean, this is up there for me in my lifetime in terms of teams I've rooted for. Uh, L.A. Clippers, because I'm a Chris Ball fan, when they blew it against the Rockets, right? Uh, that infamous game when uh, Josh Smith becomes left-handed, you know, Steph Curry making all these threes, they blow it. Uh, I would say that was really bad. I'd say the Chargers back in my youth Back in like 2008, 2007, I forgot which year it was, when they blow a game against the Jets. Screw the New York Jets, by the way. I'm happy that they stink for the rest of eternity, probably, uh, because they robbed us of that win, and it was dumb, and they got really lucky, for sure. Um, That, the Atlanta Falcons losing to the Patriots in the Super Bowl, but this is easily... Falcons, I was just rooting against the Patriots, by the way. That wasn't like a favorite team of mine. Um, But this is up there. This is up there with the greatest collapses I ever guide. They're about to, they're going to finish below 500. I have almost zero doubt in my mind about it. They can't even play spoiler. They can't even win in a regression to the average. You know what I mean? Like they can't even regress to being like, okay, we're going to be a okay baseball team and t- steal a couple games from Atlanta and maybe St. Louis and then the Dodgers and Giants, right? No, they can't even do that. Can't even do that. So rant is done, guys making all the weird references on today's episode, guys. But I have one more reference for you. In fact, it's a recommendation. Betting on the Padres, betting on their win total, it doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast, hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcasts from. Guys! Before we officially wrap things up, let me just tell you, uh, for the future of this podcast, going to be talking with a bunch of people over at Lockdown because I imagine a lot of people they uh they didn't make the playoffs, so they've got a lot of you know spare time you know to talk about stuff. You know what I mean? So we're going to have them on. Probably going to talk with my my guy Jeff Carr of Lockdown Reds. Talk about how his team also failed to capture the opportunity to get that wild card spot. Lucas Smith of Lockdown Cardinals. I will be getting on here because his team is on a historic 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 run maybe ty dane gonzalez of locked on mariners i might want to have on who's new to the network and his team is obviously they might break that sports drought so I might have him on and just going to be talking a little bit more about padre stuff um i know there was some reports about some guys from the texas rangers organization that the padres might be interested in giving some office roles first reaction to that as not researching that much into it i don't like it i don't like it because my thing is like why are we loving rangers guys I don't care if they're Preller's guys. If anything, being a Preller guy isn't exactly a ringing endorsement these days. You know what I'm saying? It's just not. It's just not. But with that all being said, guys, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast. The only podcast that may be better than the Padres themselves. Butchered that a little bit. But uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Himalaya, Overcast, where. Ever be sure to follow the YouTube, subscribe there, locked on Padres on YouTube. Let's get that subscriber count up. It's really fun doing videos over there. Let's keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to follow the Twitter page for the show or myself. And until next time, stay safe and of course, stay faithful. My Friar Faithful homies, take care.